Hi, my name is John Corbett, or some people know me better, Corbett Mavs. And today I've been asked to talk to you a little bit about how to revise for your GCSE Mavs. So the aim of this video is to give you some tips and strategies that hopefully you can take away and use as part of your GCSE Mavs revision whenever the time comes. So first of all, I'm a firm believer that hard work pays off, and I'm really confident that if you put in the effort, that that will pay off and that you'll get the grade that you want, or hopefully even a little bit better. So first of all, I would say there's a lot of topics in GCSE Mavs. So whenever you look at the GCSE Mavs specifications, there's sometimes, I think, 20, 25, 30 pages where of topics to be taught by the teacher and for you to learn so and even if you want to call the maps.com you scroll down through the list of topics you get a sort of an idea of how many topics are on the GCSE maps so the first thing I would say is don't leave your revision too late start early and um, start in September start now start in year 10 and um, it's really important whenever you've got so many topics to cover to not try and leave it to the last minute and to, to cram I'll talk a bit later on in the video about the five a days and a little and often approach but whenever it comes to your GCSE maps revision don't just look at revision being the sort of the week or two before the final exams that you know you're revising as you go through you know as your teacher does little termly tests some sort of weekly tests with you that's revising as part it's all forming together to form part of your revision so one of the key things i would say is with gcse maths start early um, and also take advantage of all the support around you there's your teacher there's websites such as called maps even friends and family can be a great place to turn to whenever you need help and um, without either a part of your revision or even part of your homework and your maths studies so as you're working on your maths course your gcse maths courses remember there's people around you that you can turn to it might be the person in class you can literally turn to them and ask them for some help on a question or it might be your teacher your mum, your dad um other relatives friends and uh, even websites such as corporate maths they'll be really useful for you as you're revising now before i carry on with a list of suggestions i'm going to sort of also recommend that you consider where and how you revise and there's different types of revision i'm a firm believer that you should try to include all types of varieties there's going to be times whenever you're revising as part of a group, such as in revision sessions or with friends. Uh, you may be working on past papers, even using revision cards. You, be, you can talk to your friends, ask questions, listen to them, and listen to, ask, listen to what they say. You can ask them questions. You can actually learn quite a lot by listening to how they approach topics and questions. Um, there'll be times whenever you're revising it on your own, uh, so sitting and studying at home. There'll be times whenever you're revising using your phone or your iPad, so maybe looking up corporate maps videos, looking on Twitter, um, looking at different websites, just to get sort of find strategies and techniques to how to approach certain topics or questions. So there's different types of revision and there's different places that you'll be revising whether it's part of groups uh, individually or even whenever you're sitting or looking at your iPad or phone uh, you know or, or computer now in terms of revising individually um, there's going to be times whenever you're going to be revising individually maybe you know with your GCSE maths revision it could be that you're working on past papers it could be that you're revising key facts and information and going through your notes it could be you're just doing some practice questions on corporate maths or using the corporate maths revision cards now in terms of revising individually I, I really recommend that you try and remove yourself from distractions turning off your phone I always find that the the local library is a, good, a great place to go I sort of whenever I was revising for my GCSE GCSEs and A-levels, I used to go to my local library and, and study there. So you try and find somewhere where you can revise quietly, whether it's at home, whether there's a, a sort of a quiet place you can revise at home away from distractions or the library or in school. So try and think, you know, where you're going to do your individual revision and wh where you can revise best, where you can do that study without those distractions. Also, it's really important whenever you're revising and even whenever you're just going through your whole GCSE maths course, that you're equipped, ready to learn maths and ready to revise. So make sure you've got all the equipment that you need. That obviously for maths, you're gonna be needing your calculators, your scientific calculators, they don't need to be pink. <laughs> you can use you know different colors of calculators, different types of calculators, but a scientific one and make sure that you're familiar with it. I would recommend making sure you, you have that in year 10, year nine, year eight, so that you've got it, you're using it regularly and you've become familiar with your calculator. Um, in terms of other equipment, um, make sure you obviously your, your rulers and pencils, your pens. Um, in terms of protractors, I have a 180 degree protractor. I'm a big fan of a 360 degree protractor as well. I find they're fantastic for bearings questions. So making sure you've got your protractors, your pairs of compasses, and again, using those through your GCSE maths lessons, making sure it's tightened and becoming familiar with how you use your pair of compasses best and um, so obviously make sure you've got all the equipment for your revision and also that you've got your notebooks um, and whenever I'm teaching my students in class I get my students to write notes as I'm going through the topics and that notebook is a great point of reference for them as they're studying for their GCSE maths exams so get a notebook at the start of year 10 and 11 make sure that you're filling out with information that you're going to need to know or maybe go back to whenever you're doing your revision 
So there's some general tips um, in terms of rev revising and considering the places you revise, how you revise, um, the, having the equipment and so on. Okay, so I'm going to go for my nine tips now to GCSE mileage revision. My first tip is use a little and often approach. So rather than leaving your revisions to the last minute, maybe cramming doing three, four hour revision sessions in May, is use a little and often approach. So starting early and spending 10, 15 minutes every single day doing some Mavs, so Mavs revision. And one of the things that I would highly recommend is using the five a days. Um, it's, it's a fantastic way to do some revision, to spend five, 10 minutes every single day doing some GCC Mavs questions, which will hopefully help you remember the things that you've done a week ago, a month ago, a year ago in your Mavs lessons. And by regularly having those opportunities to practice those topics, will make sure that you don't forget them, that they're, they're fresh in your mind because you, you're revisiting them regularly. In terms of the five a days, they can be found in Corbin Mavs. So go to CorbinMavs.com and go in at the top here, you've got five a days. If you click on that, so you get the five a days for GCSE, and that's the nine to one GCSE. And there's five different versions of the five a days. There's numeracy, foundation, foundation plus, higher, and higher plus. So there's something there for everybody. And if you can spend five, 10 minutes doing those every single day, they'll make a massive difference to your confidence with your mathematics. And as well as the five a days being available on the website, they're also available on the A4 books. And in red, we've got the numeracy books. In orange, we've got the foundation. In yellow, the foundation plus. In green, the higher. And in blue, the higher plus books. Okay, so that little and often approach will make a big difference to whenever it comes to your confidence going into that GCSE Mavs exam. Okay, next. Another thing that I think is very important whenever you're revising GCSE Mavs is to revise strategically and to have a list of all the topics that are on your GCSE Mavs course. So if you go to Corp Mavs and search for revision checklists, you can find the revision checklists for edXL Higher, edXL Foundation, AQA Higher, AQA Foundation, OCR Higher, OCR Foundation. There's the CA checklists as well. And those checklists have all the topics that are on the GCSE Mavs course. So in red, you've got the number topics. In blue, you've got the algebra topics. In green, you've got the geometry of the shape, space and measures topics. And in orange, you've got the statistics and probability topics. And beside each of the topics is the video number. So if you need to do any extra revision on any topic at all with your GCSE Mavs, you can go to that video number on Corp Mavs and watch the video tutorial of me teaching that topic. And there's the practice questions and the textbook exercises as well. And actually those revision checklists are hyperlinked. So if you click on it, it should bring you straight to the video as well. So in terms of revising strategically, it's very important to have a list of all the topics that are gonna be on the exam. But then it's also important to establish what topics are your strengths, so what topics you're confident in, and you can go through the list and tick those off and mark off the ones you're confident in, but also to know what topics that you need to pay some extra attention to, and they can be identified whenever you're sitting a mock or a class test, or even just asking your teachers, you know, asking your teacher, could they let you know which topics they think you could do with a bit of extra practice on? And you can sort of highlight those on the revision checklist, go through, watch the video tutorial, do some practice questions, try the textbook exercise, and then take it off once you're then confident with it. And as I said, on Corp Mavs, beside every single topic, you've got the video number, so you can watch the video tutorial of me teaching the topic. Then there's the practice questions, which are GCSE style questions. And then there's also the textbook exercises. So if you really need to focus on a topic and to give it lots of attention, I'd highly recommend watching the video then trying the textbook exercise and spending the time going through those and then going to the practice questions. Okay, number three, papers, papers, and more papers. Practice papers and past papers are gonna form a big part of your GCSE marriage revision. I tend to leave them to a bit later on, so I wouldn't be doing loads and loads of past papers in year nine and year 10. Um, but as it gets to sort of to Christmas time of year 11 and onwards, past papers would be very important. Um, it, it, it builds your confidence in topics where that are quite straightforward. So drawing histograms, expanding pairs of brackets, questions like that. It'll build your confidence in those and mean that whenever you come to do those questions in the GCSEs, they're quite straightforward. But even the problem solving questions and the questions that are a bit different, by tackling those and regularly seeing those, so the skills that you use whenever you're approaching them will be really useful to learn and to practice so that whenever you come to the actual paper, you'll be much more confident in tackling them. So past papers are really important. Also mark your past papers using the mark schemes or model solutions, or sometimes if you need some extra help marking them, feel free to ask your teacher really nicely if, if they will help you. You know, if you've done a test paper and you bring it into class, you say, you know, ask really nicely if they can sort of t mark your test paper and give you some ideas and topics to work on. I'm sure they'll be happy to help out as well. Uh, maybe even thank them of a bar of chocolate <laughs> but but so past papers and practice papers are going to be a really big part of your GCSE maths revision and make sure you know which exam board you're doing and make sure that you get and download all those past papers and have those ready to to use whenever you're doing your revision okay number four timings 
It's very important for your GCSE maths exam that you don't spend too long on one or two questions because that might leave you a bit short of time towards the end of the test paper. I've had some students that I can think of in the past that whenever they've done their mock exams, they've spent too long on some of the questions and then they didn't have enough time to do maybe the last page or two and they didn't get the grade they wanted in the mock. So it's very important for me to raise that with the students and do some practice with them. Now in terms of your test papers, make sure you know how long the test paper is. So here's an example. This test paper is 90 minutes long and there's 80 marks in this paper so if this was the test paper I'd be saying to the student well there's 80 marks so if you spend 80 minutes doing the questions so that's a minute a mark that's 80 minutes that would leave you 10 spare minutes to check for your answers or if you slightly overrun you've got a bit of a bit of a cushion there in terms of timings and that's it so it's very important as you approach maybe the springtime of year 11 to make sure that you're getting your timings right so that you're not regularly running out of time in the test paper Okay, tip number five, extra opportunities. I highly recommend that if there's any extra opportunities available to you to, to take them, to avail of them. So for instance, if there's revision sessions in your school, try and get to them. If there's lunchtime clubs or breakfast clubs for GCSE maths revision, try and get to them. Even sometimes if a teacher mentions in passing, if anyone needs any extra help, I'll be in my room at lunchtime or break time. If you or a friend have got need some help with a particular question or something in your homework, you know, take those opportunities that are available to you. Even if you've got friends or relatives, maybe you've got a big brother or sister who's done well in their GCSE maths, well, that's somebody who's there. You've got that opportunity to, to ask them, to pester them for some of their time to go through and do some work with you or to, to help you with some questions. So avail of those extra opportunities if there's any there for you. Okay, number six. In terms of revision, I recommend mixing it up, a bit, a bit of variety. So, you know, if you're doing past papers, you can, you can do loads and loads of past papers, but sometimes you can get a bit bored. It can become a bit monotonous doing the same type of revision over and over again. So try and mix it up a bit. For instance, the Court Maps revision cards, get yourself a set of those, and you can use those to, to revise instead. So you can sort of, you know, use them as flashcards. You can look through, revise all key information, maybe get a relative to test you on them. You can sort them into piles of ones that you're confident with and ones you're not confident in. You can get a, a relative to to pick a random one and ask, you say, you've got a minute, tell me as much as you can about this topic in a minute. You can even scan the QR codes on the back for the video tutorial questions and answers. So using the revision cards rather than just using past papers all the time, can help mix it up. Go into revision sessions. Sometimes the teachers might do carousels or circuits of exam questions and mix up the activities a bit for you. Even things such as getting window pens and, you know, at home, writing on your window, some of the key information that you might need some help revising. So, for instance, here we've got the transformations of graphs, and it might be that you use your windows to draw those on so that every single time you look out your window, you've got some maths there um, that, that can hopefully sink in. Um, even if you're trying, if you're struggling to remember the circle theorems, why not get a packet of biscuits and some icing and do the circle theorems on the biscuits and take some photographs off them and then eat the biscuits. But but try and mix up your revision. So rather than just do past papers all the time, you know, do maths in different ways. Maybe if you're going to school and you've got some spare time, stick your headphones in and watch a couple maths revision video on the way to school every day. Um, but these are some things that you can do to just help mix up your revisions. So then whenever it comes to back to doing the past papers, then you're feeling a bit fresh for it so try and mix up your revision okay tip seven lesson time try and use your lesson time wisely remember that you've got three or four hours every single week in maths lessons so that's going to be a, where the, the majority of your maths learning is going to happen yes your revision is very important but use your lesson time wisely try not to you know try not to get distracted by other people or you know try to minimize your daydream and i know it's going to happen sometimes i'm guilty of it sometimes just looking out the window and and sort of going into world of my own but try to sort of stay focused as well as you can and because who knows that moment that you daydream might be the the moment that the teacher tells you something really important which comes up on the exam so try to use your lesson time wisely okay so tip number eight is to create a cheat sheet so a cheat sheet is where you get a sheet of paper uh, perhaps an A4 piece of paper to begin with, and you can write down whatever you want on it. If there's bits of information that you're struggling to remember for your GCSE maps, perhaps the density is equal to mass divided by volume, you can write that down in your cheat sheet. If you need to remember what the angles in a pentagon add up to, 540 degrees, you can write that down. Angles in a hexagon adding up to 720 degrees, you can write that down. But the idea is you get one sheet of A4 paper and you write down whatever you want on your cheat sheet. Then whenever it comes to doing your practice papers and your past papers at home in September and October, 
you can use that A4 cheat sheet to help you. The idea is you can do that test paper, that practice paper at home. And if you ever need any help while you're doing it, you've got your cheat sheet that you can glance over and remind yourself of that information. And the, so it can obviously help you complete those practice papers. But then as time moves on and you move into maybe October, November time, take a fresh piece of paper, but this time it's going to be half the size. So instead of an A4 piece of paper, you've now got an A5 piece of paper and you're going to create a new cheat sheet. Some of the information on the A4 cheat sheet, you'll know now off by heart, so you don't necessarily need to write that down. But some of the information you're going to have to condense, you're going to have to be selective because obviously you've only got half the amount of space. And then you can create a new cheat sheet, this A5 cheat sheet. And whenever you're doing your practice papers at home in October, November, you can then use that A5 cheat sheet to help you. Obviously, as you move into October, November time, you'll need less help than you did in September time. So that's that's why you've got that smaller piece of paper. But also you've learned some information and also you've condensed some stuff. Then as you get into December time, January time, whenever you're in your practice papers, create a new cheat sheet. And this time your cheat sheet's only going to be an A6 piece of paper. So you've got a much smaller piece of paper. It's now a quarter of the size of that A4 piece. And you can write down what information you can fit on there. And whenever you're in those practice papers at home in December, January time, you can use that A6 cheat sheet to help you. As you then move into February, March time, then create a new cheat sheet. And this time it's gonna be really small, it's gonna be A7, and you can write those little bits of information that you, you need to sort of a bit of help remind, you know, remembering. But obviously, as time's moved on, you've learned a lot of information, and you've just been more selective in terms of what you're writing down. But obviously, as you're doing your test papers at home, your practice papers in sort of February time, you can use that cheat sheet, that A little A7 cheat sheet to help you. And then finally, as you get into sort of March time, April time, you've now got a new cheat sheet, sort of a, a really small piece of paper, an A8 cheat sheet. You can just write those last little few bits of information that you need to learn. And then as obviously as you get into sort of April time, May time, take the cheat sheets away. You hopefully won't need them by this stage. But then you've got all your previous cheat sheets that you can use for your revision. So whenever it comes to revising in April time, May time, you've got those cheat sheets you can look back over, make sure you're confident with them. Um, they're perfect to put in car journey or they're perfect to look at during car journeys or bus trips or whatever. But you then got those cheat sheets to help you. But the idea is that in September or October time, whenever you need as much help as possible, you've got a big piece of paper. But then as time's going on, you're learning the information as well as being more selective in terms of what you need hints for. And yeah, so that's just a really great idea that my students found really useful whenever they were revising. They're called cheat sheets. Um, I didn't invent them. I found them on Twitter. Someone else maybe invented them or created them. But I just thought it was a really fantastic idea. If I knew who I borrowed the idea from, I would love to be able to, to, to say who it was. Okay, number nine. And finally, tip number nine is to use the fantastic websites that there are out there to support you with your GCSE Mavs revision. Cobra Mavs, I'm a bit biased, but Cobra Mavs is a fantastic website that can help you for your revision because you've obviously got your five a days for your little and often revision. You've got your video tutorials that you can watch if you need a recap on any particular topic. There's practice papers, or practice, there's practice papers as well as practice questions and textbook exercises. And there's also the revision cards and five a day workbooks and so on. So the Court Miles website's got loads of resources there to help you. And there's other websites that might be useful as well. And use those websites along with your other strategies for revision to really help you and support you with uh, getting through your GCSE Miles revision. And so that's it. So my nine tips were um, employ a little and often approach to revision using things like so the five a day, spending five, ten minutes every day will really have a big benefit. Revising strategically, so having those revision checklists and focusing in on those topics where you're less confident or need to do some extra work, using those video tutorials and practice questions to help you. Past papers, loads and loads of practice papers and past papers. Try to get as many of them done as you can before the real thing. Timings, do some work on your timings to make sure that you're completing the test papers in enough time so that you've got some time to go through it all at the end. Um, availing off those extra opportunities to go into revision sessions or even having if you've got relatives or friends that are good at Mavs maybe asking them for some extra help if need be. Variety so mixing up your revision so not just doing lots and lots of past papers but maybe using the revision cards, baking some cupcakes and icing some of the key information on the top of them and taking some photographs to help you remember them. Just mixing up your revision and the window pens and stuff as well. Also lesson times, you've got a lot of time in maths lessons between now and the actual exam. So, you know, using those lessons and you focus and try not to daydream and get distracted, but sort of really using those four hours every week because they're, they're very important. Cheat sheets is a really good thing to try to help you um, just with your revision, sort of you're starting off with that A4 piece of paper and as the months go on, you're making the paper smaller and smaller and writing less information on them. And finally using websites, it's just called Maps to help you. So I really, really hope you find this video useful. Thanks very much.